The number 40 is significant. We are watching many, many crazy things happening in America. There's a curse on the USA. You see, there are repercussions when you kick out God Almighty. When you tell God, you know what, God, you're the one who decided that this child would be conceived. But we are bigger than you, and we think we don't we don't think you're gonna do anything. Ah, God, you can do nothing. You can't what God doesn't see. We're gonna kill the baby. We're gonna kill this baby. Because God, who is God anyway? Well, do you remember who else said who is the God of Israel? Who is the God of Jacob? It was Pharaoh, right? Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord God? Who is this guy? Who is the Lord God that I should serve him? It's the same thing the USA says. The presidents of the USA always say, they end their speeches by saying, God bless America. God bless America. But see, they, they speak blessings and they serve him with their lips, with their tongue and with their lips, but their deeds, their deeds show where their heart is. 55 million dead babies. Yeah, the television shows that come from America look good. The movies look good. The way they dress looks good. The cars they drive looks good. But inside, death. Inside is death. The Bible says it's better to even have just a crust of bread, a little crust of bread, and let there be righteousness. Let there be justice. Amen? Rather than to be full of wealth and riches and have injustice and have cruelty and murder and families that hate each other. There's no more unnatural act. Let me tell you, there is nothing more unnatural than for the mother whose body is designed to nurture the child, for the father who God has created to protect the child, to become the murderers, for the mother and father to become the murderers of their own child. It's time for us as people of God to stand up and draw the line and say no, no matter the circumstances of a conception, no matter the circumstances that someone came into the world, this is a person of value. Amen? This is a person of worth. You know, when you read the Bible, there was one of the judges in the book of Judges. What was he? He was conceived the son of a prostitute. The son of a prostitute. But God raised him up to rule over God's people. Amen? Because man looks on what? The outward appearance. Man looks on what you look like. Human beings look at who's your father? Who's your mother? Are they rich? Are they poor? Were you born in marriage? Were you born of fornication? Were you born of rape? Were you born of incest? But God looks where? On the inside. Amen? God looks on the inside. God looks at the heart. And God will surely avenge. Here's the scary part. Here's the scary part. God will surely avenge his children on the United States of America, on the United Kingdom. Let me tell you a, a brief story, please, just to illustrate how they use their power to force nations like Kenya. But I'll use the example of Uganda because we're in Kenya now. And I want to be respectful completely respectful to your government. Thank God that you have a government here that makes it illegal to murder a baby. In Uganda, they had a bill before parliament in Uganda. It said, we're going to make it criminal. I think you've heard of these men who think they can get rid of HIV by raping a virgin. Have you heard of that? There's some people who believe that. They think some witch doctor, some false teacher told them, if you just rape a virgin, you won't have HIV. So they go find a child, they go find an innocent person, maybe a retarded person. So the parliament of Uganda said, we're gonna make a bill to make it illegal for any of these shogas, any of these wicked people to murder, to rape, and give HIV to an innocent child. Even we'll give them the death penalty. That's what the Ugandans said. Over 90% of the people of Uganda said yes, We've got to stop these people from raping these children, giving them HIV. We've got to stop these people from raping these retarded people and giving them HIV. So they wanted to vote. Everybody supported it. But the president of U the prime minister of Uganda, excuse me, the president, was 70, received a call. Ring, ring. Who was it? Barack Obama. The next moment he received a call. Who was it? 
Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And the next moment he received a call from the leader of the European Union and the President of Canada. And these Western powers said to him, if you pass this bill, because the homosexuals in the USA said, ah, Ugandans are so mean, they want to, they want to kill everybody who's gay. We're just gay, we're just happy. We like to abuse each other. So they called and they said, if you pass this bill, Uganda, we're gonna take away the money that we give to you. You won't get any more money from Canada. You won't get any more money from the USA. You won't get any more money from Europe. You won't get any more money from the UK. Or do you follow the trail? Do you see where it leads? You see, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. All kinds of evil. That was three years ago, even though over 90% of the parliament wanted to make it illegal to rape an innocent person, even though 90% of the people supported it. The president of Uganda said, my hands are tied. What were his hands tied by? The money coming from the USA. The money coming from these nations. Let me tell you something, that is not only colonialism. That is not only colonialism by another name. That is slavery. No matter how much freedom we might think we have, if there's someone who can pick up the phone and overrule the will of an entire nation, that's slavery. Do you understand? That's slavery. May God deliver us from such slavery. May God deliver his people. May we speak even as God judges these nations. And believe me, it's coming. You can't kill. For 500 years, Pharaoh persecuted the people of God. Remember? From the time of Joseph until the time of Moses, it was over 500 years. So they can get away with it for a while, right? But God is watching. God is watching. Jesus said, if you touch, if you offend, Jesus said, one of these little ones, one of these little ones who believe in me. It's better for that man that a millstone be tied around his neck. That man, Jesus said, Jesus said, should be dropped into the deepest sea. As opposed to what Jesus will do with that man. What Jesus will do for touching his child. You see, for a moment, God allows people to disobey him. For a moment, God allows people to persecute his children, but only for a moment. Amen? Amen? Only for a moment. God will surely, God will surely, God will surely avenge his children. So it's much better, infinitely better, much better that we never, never, never legalize this. Because this is, let me tell you how the Spirit of God responds. When you take a class of people, whether it's Hutus and Tutsis, or whether it's white people or black people, old people, young people, unborn people, when you take a class of people and you say, everybody else is protected. Everybody else, if you try to kill them, it's against the law. But these people, these people, hands off. This category of people, whatever, a tribe, a color, an age, religion, these people can just be murdered. But there's still, no matter what anybody says, even if everybody in the world said a person is not a person, if we took this man right here, and if everybody in the world agreed at this moment this is not a person, would he still be a person? Would he still be a person? He will. Of course he would. The Bible says, let God be true and all men liars. Let God be true and all human beings liars. It only takes one person for something to be true. And that is God, the Holy Spirit of truth. If the Holy Spirit of truth says it's true, amen, it's true. This is a person because God said so. Even if, and it's the same with this person. And it's the same with this person. Because human rights do not come from decisions made by us, amen? My right to live, your right to live, the right to live of every human being here doesn't come from decisions made by government, doesn't come from decisions made by our parents, 
It doesn't come from decisions that we personally make. It comes from where? From where? From God. From God Almighty. From God Almighty. Amen. So we wanted to fulfill the words of Proverbs 31 here. It commands us, commands us to open our mouths, to give a voice to these people who can't speak for their, themselves, because we're only two weeks away from the day of the anniversary, and I'm American, I'm here in Kenya, and I had this banner only two weeks away from the 40th anniversary of the legalization of this, and I know the people. I have met the men and women in USA. I've been, I'm 33 years old since I was eight years old, I've been preaching against this in the USA. And over those years, I have met the people who desire very much to bring this to Kenya. Let me tell you, Satan has people out there working 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Satan has people out there working. Watch out. They don't present themselves like this. They're liars. Marie Stopes is one of them. In South Africa, Marie Stopes Clinic does abortions. Marie Stopes was a woman, that's true. I've seen it with my own eyes. I think this gentleman has too. Marie Stopes was a woman who lived about 120 years ago. About 100 years ago. She was a racist. Let me tell you, Marie Stopes was a racist. She wrote love letters to Adolf Hitler. Look that up on the internet. Don't take my word for it. Marie Stopes hated black people. Marie Stopes hated black people. She believed black people were one step up from monkeys. Are you hearing me? That's what she said. Don't be fooled. Do the research. She hated black people. She thought there's too many of you. There's too many of you. Let's do anything we can. But you see, what is better? Let me ask you, what is better? If I, if I make, if you come to me in my house and you, and you want to make me a slave, what's better for you? If you have to fight me, you take a sword, you put me in chains, you make me a slave, right? You do that to me. But even better if you can tell me a lie and get me to voluntarily enslave myself. Because then you don't have to bother picking up a sword. You don't have to worry about whether I'm going to run away. I'll be more productive for you. Why? Because the slavery is in my mind. Because I believed the lie. That's what Marie Stopes did. That's what the people like her did. They were eugenicists. They were people who believed that the theory of evolution means that there are some races of people, some races of people that are inferior and some that are superior. Some that are destined to go away and some that are destined to go on into the future. You see? And they believed that. And they, let me tell you a secret, they still believe that today. And they think people in countries like Kenya are so stupid, may God forbid, but they think you're so stupid that the day is coming if they just keep doing it, keep pushing, that you also legalize the murder of your children. Why? Because they hate you. Because their God hates you. Their God hates Kenya. Their God hates Kenya. Their God is Satan. May God forbid. May God forbid. The Bible says, as opposed to these liars, the Bible says God has made of one blood all peoples. Amen? Of one blood all peoples on the earth. And has appointed the day of our birth. Now if he appointed, Paul said that in the book of Acts. Look it up. It's when Paul was preaching at a place in uh, Athens called the Areopagus. There were many people there. And he was preaching, like I'm preaching now, and he said, we are all his offspring. He was a Jew speaking to a Greek, but speaking to all these different races of people. He said, we are all the offspring of God. So here's the offspring of God. Here's the offspring of God. May God forbid. And speak up, please. I can't do it by myself. The, the Bible in Proverbs 31, let me read it again. I know it by heart. Proverbs 31 verse 8 says, Open your mouth for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the dumb. Open your mouth for the dumb. Specifically the ones who are appointed to be destroyed. Amen? Because it's just the golden rule. It's just the golden rule. Jesus said that was all the law and the prophets, to love your neighbor as yourself. So just think, if you were, were vulnerable and you couldn't speak, if you were in a position like that, if you were about to be destroyed, I don't know about you, I love life.